Hi there. I study, I report, and you have to decide. What is the great deception that Yeshua Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24 after the apostles asked him what would be the signs of his return? This is what this video is about for you to see how Lucifer through man and religion what has been done trying to change your eternal destination to open your eyes and to your mind to understand that the enemy's war plan I will introduce you to the Jewish roots of your faith if you haven't already been seeking if you never considered your faith is based solely upon Judaism and no such faith as Christianity this may at first be a strange concept or even heresy but Jewish Yeshia, the Jewish Jesus never stated he would start a new religion outside of Judaism our faith is based on Judaism as Judah is merely one of the tribes of the twelve that the Messiah was foretold to come from the line of David the concept of man's mind we as an individual have a tendency to think that the world revolves around our time as we see through our eyes this is fine when it applies to your daily agenda however when it comes to eternity and God's plan for his creation you need to think with a mind that started a long time ago and think at least to the present by doing this you can journey back in time and to see what our distant relatives and politicians did to the world we have today we are all products of our childhood and from that point we go to live our 70 years or so in life until we die what you need to do is in the first person is place the events over the past 2000 years on your own timeline and not just a short time you have been alive and challenge what you have been instructed based on today's theology in fact this video does not work out your salvation for you because the Bible states you are to work out your salvation with fear and trembling if it was so easy why would God put this in his word the first thing is to understand the person of Jesus Christ or Yeshua of Nazareth the town near the Sea of Galilee or in the Isra in Israel known as Lake Canaret is the only freshwater lake in Israel Yeshua of the tribe of Judah he was a Hebrew Jewish in his native language which was Aramaic a dialect of Hebrew in America and the world we tend to make the name Jesus Christ like a first and last name this is erroneous as in Yeshua's time there was no last names you were given the first name and took on the area of the city for your last name people didn't move around much in those times and small populations did not require last names although Yeshua was born in Bethlehem or Hebrew Bet Lechem Joseph Hebrew Yosef resided in Nazareth so this is why it's Yeshua of Nazareth number two the books of Moses or Moshe in Hebrew because of Alexander the Great Greek was widely spoken and as the forced first language but Hebrew or Jewish people spoke Hebrew at least for the purpose of the book of Moses called the Torah first five books and the Tanakh which are the writings and the prophets which you know as the Old Testament Tanakh is an acronym for Torah Navin or writings and like the Psalms Proverbs in the Kedavim which is the prophets writings as in Isaiah and Daniel the first testament was brought forward through the covenant given to Abraham although Abraham didn't walk around with the first testament under his arm nor did the Apostles walk around with the New Testament under their arm they spread the word of the Hebrew Jewish Yeshua who taught directly from the Tanakh Moshe was the first person to bring God's physical text to us however the book of Job is dated to as the oldest text here is chapter 24 of Matthew for a review the book of Matthew Hebrew Matthias is one of the original texts that was found written in Aramaic Hebrew and was changed in a few key verses to instruct you to do exactly opposite of the original text of the King James Version now teaches us Hebrew Matthew 24 verse 1 
And Yeshua went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yeshua said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, that shall be here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what will so be the signs of thy coming, and the end of the world? Yeshua answered, then said unto them, Take heed, let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled. For all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in divers places. All these things are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated for all nations for my name's sake. And they shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall shall deceive many and because the iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure to the end shall the same be saved and this is the gospel of the kingdom that shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye be therefore see the abomination of desolations spoken by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place, let him read and understand. Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let them which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let them which is in the field turn back and take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not on the winter neither or on the Sabbath day. For then shall be a great tribulation, which was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, or ever shall be again. And except those days would be shortened, should no flesh be saved alive. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or there, believe it not. For there arises many false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it or not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For where soever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulations of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the power of the heavens shall be shaken. And then there shall appear in the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together 
his elect from the four winds, from the end of the heavens to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the branch is yet tender, and put it forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no man knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father alone. But in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and God shut the door. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known and, want, and watched what day the thief would come, he would have watched, and would have not suffered his house to be broken in. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in his due season. Blessed is that servant that the Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing his good work. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over his goods, but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servant, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day and hour when he looks not for him, and an hour when he's not aware and will cut him asunder and appoint him to this portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the end of chapter 24 of the Gospel of Matthew or Matthias in Hebrew. Okay, now that we've reviewed uh, Matthew chapter 24, um, what we're going to do is talk about a little bit about the Sabbath and uh, keeping the Sabbath versus Sunday. In the beginning, uh, God had his creation story in Genesis 1, and throughout the creation day, and you read it yourself, he said it was evening and morning of the first day, evening and morning of the second day, and so on. And on the sixth day was the last day of creation. The next day he rested. And since it says evening and morning, the actual day starts at night, goes 12 hours until the day, which is morning, I guess because uh, you have to go work. But then 12 hours after that is the end of the day. But anyway, the Sabbath, the last day, or the seventh day, which means Sabbath, 
is the day that God sanctified forever and he said to keep it holy. And this was about 1800 years before Moses got the uh, law on Mount Sinai or the Exodus 20 version of the uh, keeping the Sabbath holy in the commandments of or the ten words. So this is uh, something that you'll have to search your heart for and uh, the easy way is to uh, be confused by what the New Testament says but the reasonable thing is that why is God going to re-implement the in the millennial reign the sacrificial system and keeping the Sabbath and the commandments and Jesus said that I did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it and he actually gave us another commandment to love one another this is uh, some deep questions you have to do soul searching but um, learning the Hebrew roots of your faith and knowing that the Sabbath is the day that God gives you to rest from your toils from all week is something that um, is really important that gives you a day away from the reality of life to unite with your children your family and uh, be like-minded and study the Word of God and uh, we're all going to uh, meet our maker one of these days and I found a very interesting the next thing we need to talk about a little bit is the calendar that we live off of each month. Uh, we live off the, in the Western world, and most of the world lives off the Gregorian calendar, which was named after Pope Gregory in 453 AD. It was a mixed match of uh, information that mixed the Julian calendar with uh, their calendar, changing it to 365 days moving it away from the Hebrew calendar which is 360 days we adjust every four years for the he uh, leap years and the Hebrews calendar adjusts every I believe it's 12 years and they have a leap month but the long and short of it God's original calendar was 360 days is based on the lunar solar calendar and you can uh, through computer walk time backwards by the Hebrew calendar to the very day and hour. As you see coming on screen now, we're going to talk a little bit about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, or the in Hebrew, the Ten Words. Uh, the first five being the relationship between man and God, and the second five is the relation between man and man, and how to get along with each other. And if you'll watch uh, the preceding frames, you're, I'm going to put three different videos. One's the Protestant Ten Commandments, then you'll have the Catholic Ten Commandments, and then the Hebrew Ten Commandments. So we'll look at the Protestant Ten Commandments first, and I will tell you uh, a little ahead of time that they're pretty much in line with the Hebrew Ten Commandments, and this was the uh, Protestant Reformation that tried to bring us back into a little closer fellowship with the Hebrew roots and uh, you can watch the video as it goes by but the long and short of it uh, God's Word is sovereign and he warns us about changing it yet our Bible's been changed uh, since the King James uh, was changed from the uh, Greek Septuagint, which was uh, translated from the Hebrew in about 300 BC, and uh, now we have all these other translations in the last 20 years. And like the New King James uh, version is uh, so you can understand it in English, but it wasn't written in English, and uh, so you need to understand. Like here we have the Catholic Ten Commandments. Um, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no strange gods before me. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Remember to keep the Sabbath. Honor your mother and father. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. 
you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. My point now is look at the Hebrew Ten Commandments and how far different they are from the Catholic Ten Commandments and uh, this is not my stab at the Catholicism but they have weakened God's word down and God is sovereign and he gave us the laws to live by um, before Yeshua came and this is living by these basic uh, tenets of our Creator establishes the basis for how to get along with your fellow human uh, when they're watered down, then you get gray uh, areas, and this is what the, we live in today. Is we don't live in black and white. Law is not law. We have shades of gray that are given to us by attorneys. Uh, you know, they bend the words and uh, argue for each and individual person. Uh, we're one uh, race of human beings, and uh, everybody. I found a little uh, saying today uh, off the web by one of a gentleman's pictures that I was looking at um, of a s nice wave. He put in there, I would rather live my life as if there was a God and die to find out there isn't than to live my life as if there isn't and die to find out there is one. Interesting. So I'll leave that at right now and we will continue to look into the great deception and uh, have some interesting information that will uh, make you think and uh, as I said I will report and you will have to seek out the truth through the Holy Spirit God bless okay what we're going to be speaking of now is the Council of Nicaea who canonized the First Testament of the Bible. Coming up on screen you'll see the dates and the times when these uh, occurred. The Council of Nicene was 300 approximately bishops that sat down and canonized the texts that were brought forward of the uh, supposed accounts of the apostles. The Ni Council of Nicene and the Nicene Creed as it states as follows, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father before all worlds, God of the God of light, the very God begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made. Two, for us as men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of Virgin Mary and was made of by man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father he shall come again with glory and to judge the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together, worshipped and glorified, spoke by the prophets. And now you have to swear to a polypagan theistic church in number four, and I believe in the one holy Roman Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge the baptism of the remission of sins and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come so as you watch this uh, you want not to swear to any build remember this is about missing the mark that Yeshua talked about so a few will uh, find the path and fewer will enter in these are the words of Yeshua our Lord I agree that Yeshua came to complete his plan of salvation, a free gift. However, you need to put on the full armor of God and awake and be awake with your eyes wide open. In the Hebrew, the Shema, 
speaks of hearing and obeying. So we will continue this at the next. Okay, the next, uh, as we come on to the next frame, we're going to be speaking about the Hebrew language to find out a little bit about the Hebrew roots of our faith and uh, how that applies to the text. So as it comes on screen now, uh, you'll learn that in the Hebrew language that there's 22 consonants, no vowels, and they use yachts and tittles, which are little tick marks that are found around the letters. And this is what Yeshua talked about. Not one yacht or tittle will pass until all things both be fulfilled. And uh, the Hebrew gematria is the tenant of a number value attached to a Hebrew word or letter. Like number one is God, number three is Trinity, seven would be perfection, ten is completion, twelve government, thirteen separation or split from, forty and a hundred a biblical generation. All multiples of the number are the same as the root. The great deception. Who was it? When was it? When was it? And where is it? Well, it happened a long time ago. The apostles expected to see the return of the Messiah, Yeshua, within their lifetime. All the apostles died a martyr's death except John or Yochanan, in Hebrew, died a natural death. Yeshua did not speak of the 7,000 years of God's redemption, and they were uh, at the, about the 4,000 year marker. We are about 6,012 year marker, and what is left is about 1,000 years of Yeshua's earthly reign. You know the Roman Empire is spoken of in Revelation as the great whore of Babylon who fornicated with the world. Who, what does this fornication mean? You need to identify what the doctrines of the church are. The many Christ, Pope belief, is the carnate Christ in person, the Holy Father. In Matthew 23, 9, and says, Yeshua speaking, Call no man father, for you have one earthly father in heaven. Uh, Number two is a polytheistic many god belief. Popes had his representative of Dagon, the fish god from old Babylon. The Catholics eat fish on Friday to honor Dagon. The mother Mary of Yeshua is now deemed as co redemptress to the sun. The phalanx of Nimrod is in St. Peter's Square and is a sundial and tied to the Egyptian god Ra or Mithra. Belief in the Eucharist and wine at Mass is changed to the blood of body of Christ, literally. Yeshua said, as often you do this, is do it as remembrance of me. And Leviticus forbids the consumption of blood or flesh. They use red eggs of Easter and of Ishtar, Nimrod. It's time. The supposed statue of St. Peter in the Vatican is a statue of Jupiter and is worshipped as of astrology. Just in the past year, 2011, Vatican Pope Benedict embraced Islam, creating a new religion called Chrislam, as having worshipped the same God of Abraham and Allah as the moon god. Look at their mosque in Jerusalem, the al Aska Mosque, eternally states God does not begot or have any begotten son. In Mecca, the Hajj, the black square building that you are required and have ability to make pilgrimage once in your life contains a meteorite that they believe takes sin away. The destruction of the great whore of Babylon that sits on the seven hills as spoken of in Revelation 17 and 18 is for the great deceit that is misled the masses away from the truth in Yeshua and the commandments of God. Your New Testament Bible came from the bishops through the Martin Luther and the Roman King of England all of which are anti-Semitic. You have been indoctrinated by a Roman idealism down to your everyday holidays, holidays which are enmity to the Creator, and it is an abomination to God. Yeshua stated you are to worship the Father and the Spirit in truth and have no other gods, period, before me. As you saw in the Catholic Ten Commandments that we showed, you are not to have any strange gods. If you study the roots of your Bible, you will see the deception occurred 300 years after the death of Yeshua. Following Yeshua, there were 3,000, 5,000 Jewish believers in his divinity or in Yeshua, Jesus. 
they were run out of Israel into Asia Minor, Turkey, Constantinople, Rome, and such. Constantine, the emperor of Rome, was against the Jewish anti-Semitic and had a remnant that was always left by God. Constantine was not a follower of Yeshua. He killed his wife and his child because they were bored with them. Constantine changed the Holy Sabbath of Genesis to Sunday. The Jews were actually forbidden to keep the seventh day, Friday night to Saturday night. Constantine's mother, Helena, went to the Jerusalem uh, area of without a New Testament under her arm and without archaeology or any substance to her findings went around to the occupants of Jerusalem asking about the holy places. Well she was Roman and the Jews remembered how they were treated by the Roman and misled her and today through archaeology it's proven that the Catholic venerated spots are not the true location of Yeshua's passion. Constantine formed the Council of Nicaea who canonized the New Testament 300 Roman bishops deciding how to control the masses. You need to ask yourself, if Yeshua handpicked all the apostles, then he would have chosen the ones to take his word unto the world. In the Gospel of Yochanan, it names the apostles, 12 of them, after Judas died. They replaced him with Matthias, yet we only have writings of half of them. Yeshua never spoke of Luke or Mark. If you read Luke's account of the crucifixion, it tells three different stories. Either he was there or he wasn't. In John's Gospel, Yeshua is talking to the Jewish Pharisees, stating, If witness on my own behalf it is nothing, but my Father in heaven bears witness. In John 18:8, 8, I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who testifies about me. Yeshua here states his word requires two or more witnesses. The Father Yeshua himself and the prophets of the First Testament foretold his coming. Three witnesses. Now consider Paul of Tarsus, known as Saul. Apostle Paul, the first haters of the followers of Yeshua, does everything in his power to destroy their faith. There he was exalted rabbi teacher in Hebrew named Gamiel. Saul was taught at the scriptures at the knowledge of the feet of Gamiel, the same Pharisees that missed the coming Messiah. Then Paul travels to Damascus to take a care of Yeshua followers problem, accompanied by temple guards. He had a vision of a light surrounding him that no other person saw, nor did they hear of any voice or speaking of this light. Who comes as an angel light? It's Lucifer, of course. Then continuously after the vision, Paul gets his new name and goes off, spreading to Rome. First, he states continuously, I, Paul, I, Paul, I, Paul, bear witness to myself. this tendency to uh, for Paul to say that he's I Paul I Paul I Paul is saying that uh, I don't need a third witness I'm good to go on my own you know that I had this vision you know, this is not what Yeshua taught us and uh, this is where you need to really question and ultimately Paul's teachings end up in Rome and he went through the sieve of the uh, Roman uh, bishops in the Council of Nicene in 300, thereabouts A.D. Um, and if you search the New Testament, you'll never find a, one instance where Yeshua goes to the Gentile or pagan world. In fact, there's only three Gentiles that he met with in the New Testament. One was the Roman centurion that came to heal his son before he died, and um, the woman that said he would even eat the crumbs from the dog's table. This, and then the uh, third would be the Samaritan woman at the well in John's uh, uh, gospel. Yeshua said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified when the Greeks came to him. Yeshua never mentioned, stated, or implied that he would start a new religion and call it Christianity. Yeshua taught from the First Testament repeatedly. It was Judaism. The remaining apostles that we do have writings from didn't have a New Testament under their arm. They spoke and taught from the writings of the First Testament or called the Tanakh. Where are the writings from the other six apostles or seven? Ask the Vatican. They hid or destroyed them. Let's remember that the giant statue in the book of Daniel, it has two legs. 
The right was the Medes and Persians, and the left was the revised Roman Empire. On the standard of Rome was an eagle. In Matthew 24, it states that you will find the carcasses where the eagles gather. This is the revived Roman Empire, and America is part of this. What is our nation's national bird? The eagle. Washington, D.C. street plan or layup is to up and into, including the Pentagon, is symbolic of Satan's influence in the world. Any raptor or buzzard in the, is an unclean bird. Like fish without scales, they are scavengers. I believe this is why Washington, D.C. is not part of the U.S. as a state. God set it apart from the states. Coming out of Babylon. The Washington Monument was brought here from old Babylon, was created to be symbolic of Nimrod's phalanx, his penis. If you you're raised in Babylon, you can see the four. You can't see the forest for the trees. Nimrod was the first ruler of the world. Then was killed by a wild boar while hunting. So the Babylonians celebrated his life by slaughtering a pig on his death, the winter solstice. What does the Christian church venerate the miracle of Yeshua's resurrection? A ham, an unclean animal that would never be found on the table of a Hebrew Jewish uh, fork. Sari Amos, Nimrod's wife, died and was said to return from the moon in an egg that landed in the Euphrates River, breaking open and an egg-laying rabbit emerged. In the Babylonian times, they would have sacrificed a baby on the day of Sari Amos' death and dyed the eggs in the blood of the sacrificed child. This is where the word Easter or Ishtar originates. The past year, the Obama White House at the annual Easter or Ishtar Sunday egg hunt allowed only red dyed eggs. If you look at farther into the Roman and Greek Orthodox Church, you'll also hold to this belief of only red eggs. The Jewish Yeshua celebrated Pesach or Passover not Ishtar or Easter. This is why many times that the Christian Easter does not line up with the Hebrew Pesach or Passover on the calendar. The Christmas tree we hang gold and silver balls on the ornaments and where do they come from? You guessed it, Nimrod's balls. They were Babylon's venerated his fertility so you can see how you live under a Babylonian system and not the system of God's rule or his commandments. Revisiting the Gospel of Matthew 24. Who are the many Christs that will come and deceive the very elect? The Council of Nicaea that canonized the New Testament created an oath or creed. It's called the Nicaean Creed. Look at number four and as part of the oath. The very line in that creed states, Do you must hold to the Roman church or its tenets. God's premises are that was established for evil can be turned to good. America gave Jewish people a place to re-establish their population while dispersed into the four corners of the world after the fall of the Second Temple. They had the burden to take the word of God to the nations. Ask yourself which nation has spread God's word more than the USA. Although many different sects of Christianity exist in the USA, God can turn evil into good. Let's wrap it up in this way. I can tell you that it has been added or removed from the New Testament. Yeshua appointed 12 special hand-picked men to take his word to the world. He never mentioned Mark or Luke, Paul, Saul, or being the 13th apostle, and gives strong doubt on his theology. We have seen that the Roman Church has had a dramatic hand in the deception of the masses, and the most people who claim Christ don't do behind-the-scenes investigation of the origins of their or teachers. If you are a Methodist, you hold to the Mother Church in Rome. If you're an Anglican Church, you hold to the Mother Church of England. You hold to the Mother Church of Rome with all these churches. King James Bible, you must be aware that you may be practicing and holding to the mother church in Rome. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. Your eternal destiny is your choice. No one else was responsibility. Yeshua tells us to come out of Babylon. Today you have a new world order, one world government, not by the Creator. So you need to come out of Babylon, my people, as it states in the... 
uh, God's word. Satan is a formidable adversary. In Hebrew, this is what his name means, is adversary or accuser. Until the Yeshua died and rose again, Satan had access to the throne room of God, the Creator. He is now under the feet of Yeshua. What I can tell you is because of the Dead Sea Scrolls and how they show us that the word is unchanged for the past 2,500 years, I know God's word is intact of the Israelites' willingness to bring God's word to the world, to the nations. And we have the First Testament of God's writings, and I can find Yeshua throughout the First Testament. Thank you for watching and listening. This is a free video, free for distribution, because that's what Yeshua did for me, is gave me a free gift, and I will not monetize his word or what he did for me. The American Westernized Church is a sick and secular world. It's all about big business and money. Why would this provoke a Jewish person to jealousy? It's because of the Roman Church and the Crusades that the Vatican embraced Hitler and the numerous holocausts upon God's chosen people of Israel and that the end of the sword convert or die. Yeshua also stated that prior to his return that there would be a falling away. He did not indicate this would be a bad thing. In the past 10 years, men, millions of, quote, Christians have been seeking their Jewish roots of their faith and abandoned the Christian. There is one Messiah in Yeshua. In Hebrew, it means salvation. Find the path that Yeshua said few will find and seek the path that will enter through the gate. The greatest reward you will hear is your name spoken from the book of life. And when Yeshua says, well done, good and faithful servant. We're no longer called servants, but friends, as he said in John. The world is not going to end in December 2012, for Yeshua will rule and reign for a thousand years, restraining the adversary, and you know, to get back on God's calendar, God ordained sanctified the Sabbath day, the schedule. We are always crying out to God to bless us. How about reaching out and blessing God? He gave us the breath of how about uh, crying out and blessing God instead of uh, always wanting something for us he gave us a breath of life the gift to bring us back into fellowship with him my closing prayer is may God not delay his return may his spirit open our eyes of the blind and misled and may God have mercy on all now we're going to dwell into where the great deceptions came from a long time ago so bear with me where did the word Christian or Christianity originate from it originated from the Greek and first things first the Messiah of the Bible was prophesied in the first testament written by Moses Moshe in Hebrew and it was dictated by God on Mount Sinai specifically the first testament or the Old Testament also known as the Tanakh in Hebrew the acronym for T for Torah or the five books of Moses which was transcribed by yud heh vav -Heh, or Yahweh and written down by Moshe and the AN stands for the Avin or the Psalms and the Proverbs and the AK stands for the Kedavine or the writings and of the prophets like Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and so on. In these texts foretold the promised anointed one coming to atone for man's fallen state, especially the book of Isaiah 53. Second, we are sons and daughters of Adam's lineage, and that came through the Noah's family tree, so we are of Adam's Hebrew for earth. After the fall of the second temple in 68 AD and the destruction of Jerusalem, the first followers of Yeshua, meaning the Anointed One, Greek, Christos, and the Israelite believers in the prophetic fulfilled in one man in Yeshua, Israel, for they're persecuted not only by the Romans, but their own fellow Israelites, because most still practice pharmaceutical Judaism, which is more based on the oral traditions of the Israelites and a combination of the written text. The first 3,000 to 5,000 followers went out to Asia Minor, known as Turkey and Greece and Rome. 
The first followers of Yeshua, who acknowledged him as the promised anointed one, continued to be Israelites, no matter what tribal affiliation they came from. A Jew is called a Jew because of the Messiah's lineage would come from the tribe of Judah. All Jews are Israelites, but all Israelites are not Jews, if you understand that concept. And a Jew that accepts Yeshua as the Messiah does not become a Christian. In fact, if a pagan Gentile and he accepts Yeshua as the Messiah, then you would become an Israelite or Jewish because through an adoption process, you take on the uh, practice of whoever adopts you. There are 12 Israelite tribes total, and they are the names and the meanings below. Reuben means see, behold, perceive, discern. Simeon, hear or discern. Levi is Moshe and Aaron, no property or priesthood inheritance. Dan, judge, to minister, judgment, or plead a cause. Naphtali, obtained by wrestling. Gad, crowd upon, attack, invade, or overcome. Asher, blessed, happy, prosper, straight, honest. Ishakar, reward to hire for payment. Judah, praised of Yohavah. Zebulun, dwelling in habitation. Joseph is Ephraim, to be doubtfully fruitful or productive. Doubly, sorry. Benjamin, meaning the son of my right hand or the son of my pain. Here's another concept you must have is a mindset of change. Greeks think in a linear mindset, straight line, beginning, start, end, and finish. Hebrews mindset is circular, you know, like what goes around comes around. So in 184 AD, when the Israelite followers of Yeshua were duped with the Greek analogy of Christios, so this is where the Christianity ultimately carved in stone by Constantine and the Council of Nicene in 300 AD. This was the beginning of the Great Deception, and it was caused by the Roman belief system and the religiosity of the Catholicism and in its infancy. The Council of Nicene reconstituted the message of Yeshua. The anti-Semitic Constantine shifted the festival days of the Israelites called Moed, or appointed feast days, which were actually days to fast, for God said he will turn your fast days into feast days. This is when the Sabbath was changed to the pagan Sunday, or worship of Ra, of Egypt. This is why the icons in the Roman church pictures all have the sunburst behind the heads of the saints. Emperor Constantine had most of the Israelite Jewish followers of Yeshua killed, for that long upheld lie that the Jews killed Jesus. Yeshua came to the world to die for all our sins. The Romans were mere players in the grand scheme of things. So this is the roots of most of the anti-Semitism. The second anti-Semitic problem goes back to the Esau Arab family feud that goes all the way back to Ishmael and Isaac 4,000 years ago. So now we'll get into a little deeper uh, issues of the anti-Semitic things. And I uh, want to say, dear brothers and sisters in Yeshua and Jesus, I challenge you to look for a commandment of Yeshua, and you will not find where in the first testament of the word of Yahweh, nor in the second testament of Yeshua, states he will depart from Judaism and start a new religion and call it Christianity. He states in the New American Standard Edition, Whosoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches these, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Plus Yeshua is the Lord of the Sabbath, gave us the eleventh commandment, to love one another. Sometimes love is tough. And his tough love for those who hold on to the religion of man. Yeshua was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, the lineage of the line of King David. Yeshua was Jewish, the lion of the tribe of Judah. A New Testament verse that has long been used to indicate Yeshua is knocking on the door of your heart is Revelation 3.20. This is out of context and actually is set of verses in speaking to the seven churches of Asia and to the last of the churches being the Laodicean church or the lukewarm church. 
the Jewish Messiah is knocking on the door of the church trying to get in and they're inside having church worshiping. If Yeshua were to come to the door of your average Christian Catholic Baptist Episcopal Church of today wearing his one-piece garment and his seats and his Torah scroll in hand, the person or pre preacher answering the door would not recognize him and probably give him direction to the nearest synagogue. Revelation 3.20 is the last church before Yeshua returns. And that is the church of the Western world and the King James and the New International Versions where the NIV was released. They had removed 17 pages of Yeshua's red letter words from the translations. In the churches around the U.S., it's actually spoken of as a joke among the preachers and the people that know it's the nearly inspired version or the NIV. The new Bibles that come out each year are more watered down than ever and the year prior. And now I have a very hard question for you to ponder. If Yeshua, the I Am of God, handpicked 12 Israelite men to take his message to the world, then where are the seven men's writings? We have the Hebrew Matthew text or and John or Yochanan who wrote the Gospel of John and, and Revelation and his epistles and for he was the beloved apostle of Yeshua. We have Jude and James, the half-brothers of Yeshua, writings and Matthias who was the replacement of Judas of the, after the betrayer and he has have Peter's epistles. So did Mark and Luke, Saul of Tarsus, really come from? You know, the religions of man has always been used to circumvent God's rules. And this is the problem. And if Paul or Saul was to go and write half the New Testament, one guy responds for the salvation of the whole world, don't you think Yeshua would have mentioned him by name or during his passion? Paul is responsible for this we're out of here before it gets rough doctrine known as the rapture or harpazo. He's the same Pharisee that of the same group that missed the Messiah coming and this is a very big issue. Yes, God translated Enoch and Elijah. I think he can catch away anyone he wants. But I bear witness that the Israelites went through the plagues in Egypt. God gave them forewarning and ease their suffering, but he didn't ration them out. And I believe this is the same way the church is. Moses was a symbolic of the Messiah and Israel as the church or the ecclesia and the gathering. Is it possible that the Council of Nicaea inserted the non-apostle writings into the New Testament to enslave the masses with indulgences to buy your way to a God's plan in which the, in Catholicism they taught the masses in a language that no one understood, Latin, up to 30 years ago, and then they abolished it. Then now they, three years ago, they recanted, and now they start in the Latin again. So Satan's always mimics Yeshua's work. Yeshua and the church, like the Hebrew language, being resurrected after 1900 years by Theodore Herzl's work on the reinstituting the Hebrew language seven years before Israel was born in a day. We only have the Hebrew text of Matthew, and that was changed, where it says, do as the Pharisees tell you to do. The actual text says, do not do what the Pharisees tell you to do. Mark and Luke were not apostles. Saul and Paul of Tarsus was not chosen or ever mentioned while Yeshua was in the earthly ministry. He was the 13th apostle. The King James Bible came from the Latin Vulgate of Rome, from the Council of Nicene, which is the Nicene Creed, Oath to the Mother Church in Rome. It was translated from the German by the anti-Semitic Martin Luther in 1594 A.D. King James, a Roman Catholic. Your Bible, unless you study the Hebrew text, is written by the Roman Church. That revelation states, Yeshua hates and will destroy for the masses that they have been deceived. If salvation by Yeshua through the King James Bible is so easy, why did he warn us? Seek out your salvation with fear and trembling, for few will find the path and few will enter in. You should open your eyes and shake you to your core. Your eternity lasts forever, and forever is a long time to be wrong. The great and terrible day of the Lord is at hand. Even if you don't survive until he comes, we are all appointed to die. 
if you love the Yahweh of our creation, he tells us that we will become sons of God and pass from death unto life and not the sons of Adam. This is eternity and it's your choice. Yeshua may come as a pussycat the first time, but he returns as the Lion of Judah the second. And as Isaiah 11, 11 says, I will put my hand a second time. He won't be taken prisoners. He will return as being wrathful with war and his saints at his side. Don't be deceived. These are the questions you need to seek answers from the Holy Spirit. For me, my journey is back to the Tanakh. For I know that the man didn't taint the text that we have as verified by the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeshua is all over and through the Tanakh. And his love, well, his love is stated directly in the text plainly for me. May the creator of the heavens and the earth write your name in the book of life and say, well done, good and faithful friend. So we're no longer servants, as it says in John fifteen fifteen, as servants knows what their master is doing. God bless, and I hope this has been a blessing for you.